Today, Sprinkles and I have some blueberry chores to do. So, I thought I would take you along as we are working on them and show you how to grow blueberries specifically in the south or in a warm climate in general. So I'm going to show you how to pick the right blueberries, what to do with the brand new ones that you got from the store, as well as what to do in the spring with the ones that you already have established. Welcome to my Central Texas Oasis. Okay, first let's talk about which blueberries to even buy. There are different families of blueberries. There's rabbit eye, high bush, low bush, and many others. What we need to grow in the south is rabbit eye. What you can often find in the big box stores are not rabbit eyes. They're often more suitable to the northern climates. So, as per usual, you're better off going to your local nursery or at the very least research which varieties are suitable to your area and whether what you are buying from the big box store is actually going to do well here and whether it's a rabbit eye blueberry. Rabbit eye. <laughs> Another very important consideration when choosing which blueberry varieties to buy is to remember that rabbit eye blueberries are not self-fertile for the most part. That means that they need another blueberry bush to cross-pollinate to produce good yields. They can sometimes produce limited yields without another blueberry bush, but you really do want to cross-pollinate to get good yields. So when buying the two blueberry bushes, you need to make sure that they are compatible with each other. For example, I have Climax and Austin, and they are supposed to be compatible, which for the most part means that they simply blossom at the same time. So that obviously enables them to cross-pollinate between each other at the same time. It's better to research ahead of time and know which pairs you want. But even when you are at the store, just whip up your phone and to figure out which pair to buy, do this. So you're seeing, for example, Blueberry Climax. It sounds like something you want. So you Google Climax Blueberry Cross Pollination and you will see a list of other blueberry varieties that will be compatible for cross pollination with Climax. Okay, now that you have your blueberries chosen wisely, what are the next steps? Well, I can start by telling you what you will not be doing, and that is you will not be putting it in the ground. Why? Well, in central South Texas and many other areas of Texas, the soil that we have is not going to be good for blueberries, and there is no amount of amending that you can do to fix that. What you most likely have is clay, dense, rocky, alkaline, most likely, and what the blueberries need has to be moist and acidic. That's why to have any kind of success, you need to be planting blueberries in containers. Grow bags work very well. As you saw earlier, I have two of my older bushes in grow bags and they're doing just fine. And right now I am going to be putting these in the grow bags as well. Now, because blueberries need acidic growing medium, the best thing you can do is use peat moss. Peat moss is acidic on its own, so it will provide a perfect kind of growing medium for blueberries. If you don't want to use peat moss, you can use anything else, but you will have to add a little bit of acidifying agents or go a little heavy on acid-loving plant fertilizers. My old blueberries are planted in 100% peat with some pine bark. And right now I'm going to do about 50-50 of potting soil and peat. The potting soil should have neutral pH and the peat will have acidic pH. So I will go a little heavy on amendments such as that fertilizer for plants that love acidic soil to make it a little more extra acidic. I'm sure you wanna know which blueberries I have. So I mentioned that I already have Climax and Austin. Uh, what I picked up here is Brightwell. It's this one and saving best for last the pink lemonade blueberry Ugh, I have been wanting it for such a long time 
and I finally found it. The berries it produces are actually pink and are supposed to taste like blueberry lemonade. Uh, it's actually a hybrid of rabbit eye and southern high bush blueberry, but it's supposed to be compatible with the Brightwell. Mixing soil with your hands is just so fun and to me it's a really fun part of gardening so you could use a pitchfork or a shovel or another garden implement to mix the soil. I chose to mix it with my hands because I prefer it that way. I like feeling the clumps and breaking them up. I like feeling the texture and you know it's just fun. Now, how big should the containers be for the blueberries? The resources I saw online said 30 gallons, which is gigantic. That is what I did for my two bushes. But now I'm realizing you can actually pot them up over years. So I'm going to start with 10 gallons and I'm going to pot them up as needed later on. 10 gallons is still quite big, so I think it's gonna be just fine. But technically, 20 to 30 gallons, like half a whiskey barrel, they say. I don't know how, what a whiskey barrel is supposed to look like, but they say half a whiskey barrel should do just fine. So if that tells you anything, and if you wanna spend $10,000 on filling that 30 gallon container, be my guest. Again, I did that for my two first blueberry bushes and it was so much money and it was so much work, it was so much peat moss. I just don't think it was necessary to do that right away. There is no reason why you shouldn't be able to pot your blueberries up as they grow out of your current container. I'm using the 10 gallons only because that's what I have on hand right now. Not because I specifically bought it for this purpose. Ideally, I think I would prefer it to be at least 15 gallons, but I think it's fine. Honestly, it's fine. You can grow pretty much anything in a five gallon bucket. So to me, having something that's double that size is already winning. So I wouldn't worry too much if you can't maybe afford enough soil to fill all of these. Make sure to water it in really well because peat is very fluffy and it will compress a lot once you actually push it down and water it in. You want to make sure that you won't find out later that the peat levels are very uneven and that you have to top it off, you know? Make sure to push it down once the water soaked in a bit because the gravity will do this in a few days and you'll have to top it off and it will be very annoying. So just push it down on your own a little bit up front. What I also like to do with grow bags and pretty much any containers actually is to just kind of do this. This causes the soil to kind of compress naturally and even out. And again, prevents unpleasant surprises later on. Once your new blueberries are in their final destination pots, you need to get rid of those flowers. Yes, yes, it's painful. Yes, you have to do it. You can't let your blueberries bloom the first year. You need to get rid of all the flowers. Some people say to even do it for two years, but I'm not that patient. <laughs> but basically you want the blueberry to get established and to grow more branches. And then that way you will get more blueberries later on. Your blueberry may keep on flowering in the first year that you put it in, but you have to keep picking those flowers off. Goodbye.
Now, after you let the blueberries rest for a year and grow, come spring, you'll need to fertilize them. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to remove the pine bark mulch and apply some fertilizer for acid loving plants. Work it into the top inch or so of the soil, but be gentle because blueberries roots are pretty close to the surface. So you don't want to damage them. That's why I like to not wear garden gloves for this. I don't want to accidentally be too rough with those roots, you know? Okay, now that it's all nice and incorporated, we're going to water it in. Remember that blueberries love constant moisture, especially if you put them in pure peat. Once peat dries out completely, it becomes hydrophobic and it's really difficult to hydrate it back up. So make sure that you keep it moist pretty regularly. You saw me remove the irrigation lines at the beginning. That's because in order to keep those blueberries happy in the summer, they do need regular irrigation and automated irrigation is the best way to do it. So I have some soaker hoses that do the work for me. Don't forget to put the mulch back on. You can put the same mulch back on unless there were some disease issues last year, but if there weren't any disease issues, why not? Just reuse the old mulch. Whatever you do, do not leave the bare uncovered peat because it will dry up so quickly. And like I said, the blueberry roots are close to the surface. So if the surface dries up very quickly, that will be bad. But I'm going to add some Neptune's harvest to both of them, especially the one that seems to be a little bit behind. Because, I mean, extra nutrition never hurt anybody. It gives a boost to all plants, helps with pretty much everything. And peat has no nutritional value on its own. And especially when you have something in pots, the nutrients wash out really quickly as you water it. So I'm going to add that in too. Some of the mulch broke down and I can see the soil through the mulch. So I'm going to add some additional mulch on top. This is also something that you should do as an upkeep for any of your potted plants. Also, pro tip, it's always a good practice to water the mulch after you've mulched whatever you were mulching. Because whereas the pine barks are pretty big and probably won't blow away, other types of mulch may blow away, so it's always a good idea to wet it down right after you apply it. This solidifies its properties and ensures that it will stay in place. So it's been a couple of days, but I had to come back because I almost forgot about pruning. I'm not an expert at pruning at all. And also it's too late. There's way too many leaves. You're supposed to prune blueberries when they are fully dormant, and that is clearly not the case anymore. They broke dormancy really early this year because it just got really hot very suddenly, very early. So I'm just going to prune the bare minimum. I'm going to remove canes that cross each other because you're supposed to remove that in literally any fruit bearing anything. And I'm also going to look for anything that's kind of obviously not good, but yeah, mostly things that cross each other and things that are weak, kind of not doing a whole lot to kind of open up the airflow as well. But I really don't know all that much. I don't pretend to be an expert. So 
I am going to leave articles that I used to learn about it in the description so you can find out and learn from the same sources as I do because these people know much more than I do. Blueberries are supposed to be extremely easy to propagate from cuttings. I have not tried that before, but I have plenty of cuttings to go ahead and give it a try. From what I read on the internet, you're supposed to be able to just do them just like you do pretty much anything else. So we have a bunch of green wood. So we're gonna use that green wood. You remove any flower buds and you remove all but one or two sets of leaves so i guess i'm gonna gonna just leave that for this one and there's quite a few buds here so i'm gonna leave that set that to the side now here we have a lot to work with i'm gonna divide that get this off and this and here that is a lot of leaves some flowers high sprinkles okay, anyway I'm gonna get rid of some of these leaves because you don't want to leave too much for the reason that the more leaves you leave the more moisture kind of escapes through them and these branches don't have any roots so you don't want to stress it out but you do need some because it needs to photosynthesize so it's a, it's a delicate balance sometimes some people say to clip these leaves in half i haven't done that but maybe i'll do it here as an experiment i got some pots that are filled with the same medium that the other blueberry beds were filled with going to moisten it You'll dip each cutting in root hormone, shake off the excess, get a pot, and stick it in there. Make sure there is no air pockets by pressing it down really well. Now next. All right, now we're going to put them in a location where they receive no direct sunlight and we're going to spritz them every now and then to keep the moisture up and hopefully they take. All right, I hope you enjoyed this little educational vlog and I hope that that was helpful to you. Let me know which blueberries are your favorite. And if you haven't subscribed yet, make sure to hit subscribe to make sure that you don't miss any future videos about gardening in a warm climate, such as Texas. Drop a like, as always, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye. High five. Yes, good baby. You're such a little beefcake. You can praise your posse too much because you're so muscular. Sprinkles. Good girl.